I'm Yuhua from Singapore, and I'm uh, very happy to be presenting at this conference today. So my talk today will be about using machine learning to help us like, better understand what we see in some uh, microscopy images. So uh, here are the people that I collaborated with, uh, mainly from Singapore. So uh, let's get to the project. So before I tell you about the project, I want to uh, begin first by introducing you to the equipments that uh, we use. So we use the MFM, which stands for Magnetic Force Microscopy. I'm sure like many of you have uh, seen or even used the MFM before. So here's just a, a diagram showing how the, the principles of the Magnetic Force Microscopy. So and in this uh, project, our sample is like a 2D magnetic material. And we use this uh, iridium iron cobalt platinum multi-layer stack consisting of like a few repeats of them. So uh, on the right here, you will see like uh, this MFM image taken in our laboratory. So uh, from this uh, image over here, we can tell that the, the magnetic texture is some kind of labyrinth stripes. So mainly in this project, we will deal with uh, textures of labyrinth stripes. So uh, a natural question to ask then is that what other uh, information is available from this image over here? So are we able to say something about the exchange stiffness, the anisotropy, or the, or the jaloshinsky moria interaction strengths? So to some extent, we know that uh, the relative strengths of these interactions determine the type of magnetic textures that we see. And this is uh, what happens essentially when we do micromagnetic simulations. So now uh, we try to do the reverse. So given an image of the magnetic domain here, what do we, uh, can we say about these uh, magnetic parameters? So specifically, we were interested in the values of the exchange, the anisotropy, and the Yelsinski moria interaction strings. So um, for this kind of uh, image characterization problem, is the trend nowadays to go to machine learning. So a very famous problem in machine learning involves using uh, photographs of the houses to determine its price. So it was found that uh, these convolutional neural networks, or CNN in short, they work well for this uh, type of probes. So we also use CNNs for this project. And to begin training our CNN, we need to prepare some kind of uh, training data. So in the context of our project, we will need to obtain um, magnetic domain images corresponding to a wide range of precisely known magnetic parameters. And to do this like experimentally would be very difficult. We need to have a way to uh, precisely know the values of each sample and to actually uh, accurately fabricate that. So instead, we used uh, micromagnetic simulations instead to generate these images. And we use this uh, popular software called uh, MuMax. So here you can see some, um, on the left, you can see some typical examples of our magnetic domain images. And uh, we only keep the out of plane component of the magnetizations as uh, this is typically the extent of the information that we can obtain from MFM. So here um, in the simulations, the white um, pixels corresponds to the magnetization pointing out of the page and the black pixels corresponds to um, the, the magnetization pointing into the page. So this is uh, kind of consistent with the color scheme that we get from MFM. So with these images, we plug them into our machine learning models uh, to carry out the training. So if you have noticed in the previous slides, the appearance of the domain images is rather different in the experiments. So on the left is the experiments and what we see in the uh, simulations. So ultimately we would like to achieve, right, is to get our model to solve the real world problems. So we need to get 
the model to be able to recognize these uh, experimental images. So what we do is we try to make these two kinds of images look more similar. And we achieve this uh, by using a combination of median filters and thresholding. So uh, the result is that the image will end up as a black and white, as you see in the right side. And also there are clear um, regions of uh, magnetizations, whether it's pointing into the page or out of the page. And uh, this has the added, also the added benefit of removing noise within the image. And especially in the simulation images where we use this um, artificial thermal uh, noise to, to generate our images. We need to remove it before we use it for our machine learning. So let's move on to the results of this uh, model. So here are some plots that are called uh, parity plots. So what essentially this is that um, in the vertical axis, it will be showing some predicted values. And in the horizontal axis, it is like the actual value of a certain image. So ideally, we want them to be the same, the prediction and the actual value. So they should be lying somewhere along the y equal to x line, which is drawn here for reference. So, but obviously the model is not perfect. So um, the points do not line up exactly on the line, but they are all rather close to the line. So I have shown also the R square value for each of the plots. So we have um, a few plots. The K effective is the NISO, uh, anisotropy, the effective anisotropy. The A is the exchange. D is the Yelsin Moria string. And kappa is this uh, thermal, thermodynamically stability factor, which is um, an additional parameter that is dependent on just A, K effective, and D. So we have included this um, addition parameter so that uh, we can better keep track of how our model is um, uh, doing well. And also uh, this kappa, we also try to see if it agrees with the definition of kappa from uh, A, K, and D. So as you can see, the, the model is predicting uh, relatively well and all the R squares are above 0 0.8. So uh, next, I can show you the results of the model predictions with experimental images. So um, I just show you the results here. So because our stack, uh, multi-layer stack, is made out of this um, iron and uh, cobalt layers, we can tune this relative thickness to control our magnetic strengths. So we have three, um, three kind of um, ratio of the thickness. And each of these um, thickness, we have some kind of values for the uh, magnetic parameters. So in the black um, squares, we label by the uh, predictions of the experimenters. And in the red square is the value that is measured. So we see that actually there are some kind of discrepancy and that is quite expected because um, ultimately the uh, simulations and the, uh, the real um, micro microscopes are, uh, have different kind of images. And also we try to use the experimentally um, measured values to regenerate some uh, simulation images. And this time we use the model to predict on them. And these are shown in the blue lines. So they are quite close to the red points. And this in fact shows that our, our model is quite consistent at least. So um, although there are some discrepancy, um, we believe that this uh, machine learning tool is uh, useful in terms of helping us to get a, like a first cut at approximation to find the value of these um, parameters in an easy way. So we hope that um, this uh, can maximize the ability to uh, extract the information from these domain images and hopefully it will help us to uh, accelerate our material characterizations. So uh, with that, I think I've come to the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Shwarin. Uh, does anybody have questions? Okay, so I'll ask one. Uh, for the training of this neural network, uh, how do you choose the the cases to use for training? Sorry. Uh, how do I choose the training? training? 
yeah, the training set, uh, is there uh, any characteristic that makes the training set interesting for that or? Uh, we just have a wide, a wide range, let's say exchange, we generate up to a certain range and also for, for D and K. So what happens is that we, after we generate a lot of these images, we split them into two sets. So like 20% and 80%, 80% we use for the training and the remaining 20% we keep later for um, like testing to see how well our model does. So that's roughly the okay. workflow. For validating. Yeah, the validating. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other question? So I have a question. Like, uh, what are the assumptions in your model you think uh, that has uh, led to the observed deviation from experimental value? Um, firstly, is that our model uh, is based on these um, micromagnetic simulations. So whatever limitations that these uh, micromagnetic simulations has, it applies to also to our model. Yeah. So um, essentially, uh, we found that uh, within the within the using micromagnetic simulations, the model is performing quite consistently. But when we try to extend it to, um, let's say, experimental images, there is some kind of issues between, just the, the images are not really compatible. So if you see like, this is the kind of images we get from, um, let's say, a real experiment, compared to like this image we get from a micromagnetic simulation is a bit different in some sense. Yeah, so we try our best to make them look similar, but there's always a bit of difference involved. Thank you. Okay, so any other question for Juan? So there are some questions in the chat. Usama says 18 hours is a relatively long time. Um, yeah, it can be a long time, especially if we need to train multiple models, but I think that's just how the way it is. In Typical machine learning. Um, some can be longer, yeah. Okay, and another one from May. Uh, would this method work for domains imaged by other techniques like LTEM? If so, what optimizations are required? Um, I, I guess it can work for LTEM images as well, uh, provided we need a, a fast way to generate a lot of these LTEM images. So I'm sure I, I heard of some like software where you can also simulate these LTM images. So if we can do that um, very quickly, so I think it will be possible to extend this technique to other kind of microscopy methods. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And 